chapter is broken up into two categories. The first part is what we call samples, sampling, samples, taking samples. The second part of it is broken up into what we call experiments, okay? Sample and experiments. So today what we're talking about is sampling for the next couple of days, sampling. What is a sample? Well, there's two types of things. There's a population and then there's a sample, okay? A population, what is a population? A population is a statistical study uh, and a statistical study is the entire group about which we want to find information. So a population can be very small. This class, period six, AP statistics, not very big, right? Or it can be very big. A population could be the citizens of Fresno, Fresno, uh, California, right? Could be very big, could be very small. It's just everybody on which we want to find information, okay? Now, part of that is a sample. A piece of that is a sample. Sample is always smaller than a population. So a sample is the part of the population from which we collect information. We use information from a sample to draw conclusions about the entire population. So if I want to know something about students um, who take AP statistics on this campus, I would get a sample from you guys, right? So if there's 20 people, it would be less than 20, right? That would be a pop, that would be a sample. That's the difference between a sample and a population. Now, if, if I wanna get information from everybody who lives in Fresno, California, then that's a big population. And then I would get a sample from that. So it would be pro the sample would be big because it's coming from a big population, okay? So you collect data from the sample, and then you make an inference about the population. Inference are conclusions. Inference is kind of seeing the future, okay? You collect data from the sample, and then you use that to make decisions, conclusions about the population. Even though I didn't get everyone, I didn't talk to everyone in the population. I only talked to a sample. But based on that sample, I can make inferences about the entire population, if done correctly. And that's what we're gonna talk about. How do you do that correctly? How can I get, if I wanted to get opinions about anything in Fresno, California. In Fresno, there are 600,000 people that live in Fresno. I don't have to ask all 600,000. If I take a good sample, that'll give me a good reflection of what's going on, right? So how do I get a good sample? That's what this that's what this this uh, chapter is all about. Okay, one thing is a sample survey. A survey. You guys have probably done surveys before. Ask a question, you answer. Right. Um, so there's three steps to it. You define the population you want to describe. Who are you trying to get information from? Who's the big group you're trying to get information from? Okay. Step two: say exactly what we want to measure. So what in the survey, the sur sample survey is a study that uses organized plan to choose a sample that represents some specific population. So you get the sample. Who am I going to ask? Right. If it's the f entire Fresno, California, I'm not going to ask all 600,000 people. I'm going to get a sample. So who are those 6,000? Who are those people that I'm going to ask? And then what am I going to ask them? That's step two. And then step three. Decide how to choose a sample. So that's step three, just try how to choose a sample. Okay, so how do you get a good sample? Well, first of all, it's gotta be random, random. What does random mean? Random is one of the most misused words in the English dictionary. A lot of people do not use it correctly. Like that's random, people say that all the time. Um, they'll say that's random, but it really isn't. So what's the definition of random? Well, this is the main definition right here. No human choice, no human choice. If there is human choice involved, it's not random. If there is not human choice involved, if I have no say in it, then it is, then, then, then that's what we call random, okay? So, all statistical sampling have the and have in common the idea that chance, not human choice, is used. So if I were to pick you, 
I were to pick students, I were to turn my head around and around, close my eyes and turn my head around and do this until I pick someone like that. That's not random. But you're like, you closed your eyes. No, because I know where you guys sit, right? You guys have sat there all semester long. I know where you guys sit. So that's not completely random, okay? Even if I didn't choose, even if I didn't, um, even if I did not look, right? It's not completely random. So the idea that why it makes something random, there's no human choice evolved, no human choice, okay? So let's say I walk out of my classroom, or let's say one of you walks out of the classroom. Mr. Flores, I gotta use the restroom. So you take the pass and you walk out. And right when you walk out, one of your best friends is walking right past you. First thing you say is, whoa, that's random. But it really isn't. It really isn't random. Why isn't it random? You know where he, he or she might know where the class is at. Yeah, so they know. And when you walked out the classroom, it was your choice to walk out the classroom, right? Because you had to go to the restroom. So you're like, Mr. Fuller, can I use the restroom? Yeah, sure. I didn't say go outside. You were the one who chose to go outside. Even though you didn't know your friend was there, it's not completely random. Okay. So in order for it to be a random, there has to be some sort of system to the randomness. And we'll talk about that later, but that has to be, there has to be some sort of system for the randomness. Okay. So how to sample random sampling statisticians remedy is to allow impersonal chance to choose the sample, a sample chosen by chance rules. See rules is where you have your sample or you have your system. There has to be a set of rules to make it a system. Any system has rules, okay? That rule out, rule out both favoritism by whoever's choosing and self-selection by whoever's getting chosen, okay? Random sampling, the use of chance to select a sample is the central principle of statistical sampling, okay? Randomize, so if I use the word randomize, Randomize, let chance do the choosing. Randomization can protect you against factors that you are that you know are in the data and factors that you're not even aware of. We call those lurking variables. If you're not even aware of that could happen, that's why randomization helps you. Randomiz randomizing makes sure that on the average, that the sample looks like the population, okay? So if I'm trying to get information or a survey from people who live in Fresno, California, I want my sample to look like Fresno, California, right? If there's a certain number of females versus males, if there's a certain number of, uh, of ethnicities, if there's a certain number of ages, right? I don't want to get a sample from Cal from Fresno, you know, from, sorry, from Fresno, uh, the city of Fresno and everybody or almost everybody is over the age of 60. That's not a good representation of Fresno. Most of the people in that live in Fresno aren't over 60. There are some, but they're a minority, right? Most of the people are from zero to 60, right? I don't want to get um, a sampling of people from Fresno and almost everyone's male. That's not a true representation. I'd have to figure out what the gender specifics are, right? How many are this? How many are that? How many are this? How many are that? Here's the thing though. If you do ramp sampling correctly, random sampling correctly, all of that will be taken care of. Okay. So that your sample looks like uh, the population. So another example, let's say the population is this class, people in this class. Okay. Let's say the sample pop, the, the population is this class and I choose a sample. And it's all students who got an A on the test. Well, there are A's on the test, but there are also B, C's, D's, and lower, right? So if I get all students who got A's on the test, that's not a good representation, right? If 30% of you get A's on the test, then 30% of the people I pick should be, have A's, right? It should be a representation of what is going on in the population, 
Okay, how do we take care of that? Through proper randomization. All right. Okay, so the first type of sampling, how do I get samples? The first and most popular one. This is the one we'll be using most of the time, especially throughout the year. It's called a simple random sample, a simple random sample or an SRS, SRS for short. So an SRS of size N, so however big you want, consists of N individuals from the population chosen in such a way that every set of N individuals has an equal chance to be the sample actually selected. So how do I do it? Well, um, random number table. I'll show you what a random number table is next time. Tomorrow I'll give you I'll give you an example of a random number table. Random number table is exactly how it sounds. It just looks like a bunch of random numbers. Uh, graphing calculator. Graphing calculator does randomization. Okay, that's pretty much the only reason we're going to use the calculator this chapter is for the randomization. Not calculating anything. I just have a group of numbers that I want random randomized. Right. Um, names out of a hat. That's probably the most the most commonly one used. So if I want to pick a sample of you guys, I put everyone's name in a hat once or twice. So everyone's name is in the hat, okay? I can't have three of the same person. So let's say I have three names for one person and one name for another person. I have to have an equal representation. I don't look, right? Everyone's got their hat, their names in there. I pick out one, I pick out two. That's an SRS. I did not have any choice in who I picked. I didn't look, I reached in there, everyone's paper looks the same, little piece of paper or whatever, and I randomly choose one, okay? Another one, kind of like the calculator, but different. Oops, not that one. There are some programs that, are, that have algorithms that do that. So everyone's name is on, is signed up for Google Classroom. So Google Classroom has a little randomizer there, right? They have a algorithm. There's an algorithm that when I hit start, it randomly picks one of you guys, right? I have no control in it. I didn't build the algorithm. I just put start. So if I hit start, one person, another person, another person, another person, right? I can reset it, right? That's an algorithm. It's got an algorithm that selects people, okay? I didn't choose who got chosen. That's an example of a simple random sample, okay? It's the best. It is the best way to get a sample. So if you can get a sample by this way, it is the best method. It's the most basic and fundamental type of sampling, the best. Okay. Like some teachers use that for their way they call on students because it's 100% random, right? I have these. I rarely use them, but I have these, which are everyone's numbers on it, no names, numbers aren't on it. And then I'll just do this and then I'll say desk number 18, desk number 32, so on and so forth. That's a random, that's a randomization. They're not in order. They're not in order at all. It's not like they're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're just in random order that I put on a, a little um, ring and I do it that way too. That way works too. That's That would be an example of a simple random sample. Okay. The next one is called a stratified random sample. Stratified random sample. What's the difference? Well, the difference is this. Before you choose someone, you break them into what we call strata. Strata. Strata are homogeneous layers, subpopulations. Okay, so what does the word homogeneous mean? The same, right? If you have a homogeneous group, that means everyone in the group has the same cat is the same. Like if you have a if you have a bunch, if you have 10 males in a group, they're homogeneous because they're all male, right? They might have other differences, but there's a there's whatever you're looking for, right? Ninth graders. 10th graders, 11th graders, 12th graders, those are homogenous groups. Everyone in the group of 12th graders is a senior. Everyone in the 11th grade group is a junior, so on and so forth, right? 
They have something in common that makes them the same, all right? It's a subpopulation. Ninth graders are a subpopulation for the students on this campus, okay? Give me one second. Okay. Okay. So first thing we do is we take a population, break them into subgroups. So like if I wanted to get a um, stratified random sample of people who live in Fresno, California, one way to strata them is by where they live, right? Those are called zip codes. Zip codes. Fresno has a lot of different zip codes. 93722, 93711. 93704, 93705, 93723, right? I could break people up into where they live by there. And then what I would do is I would select people from each category, from each. Okay, so here are the people from 93722, picking some out of there. Here are the people from 93723, right? So what I would do is I would get, I would put everyone who lives in 93722, put them in a hat, put their names in a hat, pick some out of there, however many you want to pick. And then I would have a different hat with everyone who lives in 93723, pick out some names. And then I would have a different, everyone who lives in 93704, 93704. Have another hat for 93705, have another hat for 93711. And I would keep doing that, right? So that that guarantees that I have equal representation from everyone that lives in Fresno, right? There are a lot of different zip codes in Fresno. That's one way to do it. If I wanted to do it by you guys, by students at Central High School, I would probably use the easiest one. You already broke it up into groups. Ninth graders, 10th graders, 11th graders, 12th graders. I'd get 10 people from ninth grade, 10 people from 11th grade, 10th grade, 12th grade. I have 40 people. So I can't, so no one can say, hey, Mr. Flores, you didn't ask anyone that was a ninth grader. You didn't ask anyone who's a 12th grader. Yeah, I did. You guys had equal representation. So break them up into strata first. That's, the, that's for stratified random sampling, okay? Take the SRS. And then from there, we still do an SRS. But before we do an SRS, we break them up into groups. Okay, that's the difference between strata and, um, and a simple random sample, because they both are SRS. Stratified random sample, SRS. But if I say SRS, I'm only talking about this guy right here. So it's a little confusing, but Stratified means groups, break them up into groups first. Okay, so cluster, cluster sample. Cluster sample involves a couple layers. First thing we gotta do is divide the population into smaller groups. Okay, so if I wanna divide, so again, let's go back to Fresno, California. I still have all of the people from 93722, 93723. 93705, 93704, 93711, all of those, right? I still have different hats. But what I do first, before I go to the hats, right? I feel like I don't have everyone's a focus up here. I don't feel, if I don't have your eyes up here, I'm talking to you, okay? Because if I don't have everyone's focus, that tells me this is too easy, Mr. Flores. Please make the next test harder. And I've, I've started grading the last test and I don't think some of you want that because you can't really go much lower for some of you, okay? So make sure you're paying attention up here, all right? Or tomorrow I'll just say, bring your books, you can read about it yourself because this is straight from your books, okay? I'm trying to help you guys. All right, so take a cluster sample, so a cluster sample. So before I go, I'm not pulling from everyone. I put everyone's zip code into one hat, pick out two of those, 93722, 937 whatever. I only go to those hats now. I only go to those hats. And I choose people out of there, okay? 
But when I choose people out of there, I choose everybody out of there. So when I chose 93722, I go talk to everybody who lives in 93722. Stratified, I didn't. Okay, stratified, I only talked to 10 people from there. Okay, if I choose, if for cluster, if I pick 93723, I go talk to everybody who lives in 93723. It's called the census. Talk to everyone. Okay, that's the difference between a cluster and stratified because you guys are gonna do this in a little bit here. You guys are gonna do your own sampling in a little bit here. And the biggest question I have is, how do you do that? Well, I'm trying to tell you right now. Okay, so make sure you gotta take extra, extra notes, take extra notes, okay? Systematic, systematic's the easiest, every fifth person. So if I work at Starbucks and I wanna do a survey, every fifth person that walks through the door, I'm gonna ask them a survey. Every 10th person that walks through the door, I'm gonna ask them a survey. Whatever the number you decide, you can decide. It's the easiest way to do it. It's one of the worst in terms of randomness, but it is a system. It's a system, okay? Everybody who does a, if you walk into a store and they give you a sample, if you go to Disneyland and they give you a survey, if you get an email that says, can you fill out this survey? That's how they did it. That's how they did it. They just got, there's like every 10th person on the list, send them a survey. Every 10th person that walks past me, I'm gonna ask them a survey, okay? That's, that's the sampling methods. The biggest one that you see probably all the time is checkpoints. When you're driving home night, late at night and you gotta stop, everyone stops. Usually they're DIY, DUI checkpoints. Sometimes they're check, checking something else, but, and then they'll, they'll wave cars by. They'll be like, you can go, you can go, you can go, you pull over. You can go, you can go, you pull over. How do they decide who they pull over and who they don't? They have a system in place. They have a system in place on who they're checking. It's not, oh, you look like you've been drinking, you move to the side. No, it's a system in place. They say, you go, you go, you go, whatever that system is. They've decided that system before they even get there to let traffic go. So they'll let people go, some people go through and then they'll say, oh, no, you gotta go to the side. And they'll ask you questions. And if you pass, you get to go. If not, they take you in, okay? That's how they do, that's how they do checkpoints. That's how they decide for uh, any type of checkpoints. DUI checkpoints, or um, another big one that they do is for checking for insurance. Checking for insurance is huge. My brother-in-law, my sister-in-law actually just got in an accident, pretty bad accident. And guess what? The person who she ran into did not have insurance. That person is not in very good shape right now. My, my, my sister-in-law, she's got insurance, so her insurance is going to pay for it. But the other person, they're probably sitting in jail right now because they don't have insurance. That's a big thing, okay? So um, that's another type of checkpoint. So if you're driving, you gotta have insurance. Cal State of California says you have to have some sort of insurance. So they do that one too. That's a big one. Multi-stage, multi-stage sampling, multi-stage. Multi-stage sampling involves randomness is involved at more than one stage. Be careful not to confuse with cluster. Um, so multi-stage has multi-stages. That's why it's called multi-stage, okay? Multi-stage means at the very top level. Let's say I wanna give a sample survey to people at the school, okay? Everyone's got a third period. Everyone's got a third period. It's considered your homeroom period. So what I do is I pick a list of every teacher who has a third period class, I put them in a, put them in a hat, pick five, right? Um, from there, so I have a list. From there, I put all the students who are in there. So now it's not a hundred, not, it's not, now it's not 800 students. It's maybe a hundred, pick out names then. And then keep, keep picking out names until you get down to, you whittle it down until who you get, how many you want, right? It's different than cluster. It's different than cluster, okay? Multi-stage, another one you guys see. If you go to any fast food, any fast food restaurant, 
there will be some times when they offer new items. And you're like, oh, new items on the menu. Just because they offer us a new item doesn't mean if I lived in LA or San Francisco or anywhere that they would have a new item. What they do a lot of times is they use multi-stage sampling to determine who gets the new item. Okay, so what they'll do is they'll say, um, if they wanna do just California, they put all the counties of California in a hat, pick out some. In those counties, they'll put all the cities in those counties, pull it out. Those are the cities that get the new item or whatever, the new item it is. They get, those are the ones that get the new item and then they test it out. They test it out and they say, do these people like it? Okay. What do you mean different context? If that's what they're picking. If that's what they're picking. I have a couple other ones, but just, judging by you guys, it doesn't really look like you guys want to hear it. So I was just going to skip ahead. I'm, I'm really struggling with some of you guys. Some of your body language is killing me right now. Okay, make sure you're focused up here because I'm trying to go over everything here, but you know, body language is killing me right now. So make sure you're focused up here. Um, so let me give you another example of multi-stage. Multi-stage, let's see. Let's see the big, uh... yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's the example I just gave. Yeah, if you want to use Taco Bell, Taco Bell, let's say Taco Bell has a brand new um, item they're going to give out. It's a brand new item. They don't want to give it to every Taco Bell because do we know how it's going to do? No, they don't know how it's going to do. We think it's going to do well, but there's stuff that Taco Bell releases that people don't like. So they said, you know what? We're not going to give it to everyone. We're going to do this. So they put in a hat. Draw a hat. Put in a hat. Every state in the United States, they dump in. All 50 states. So how many pieces of paper are there? 50, there you go, you're awake. Okay, so 50. They pick out, I don't know, two, three, four, five, however many. Okay, we got theirs, okay? Then what they do is they pick every city in that state, cities, cities, throw them all in there. Pick, I don't know how many, five, 10, however many they pick out. Those are the cities that we are going to give our new, brand new um, item to. See how it does. If it does good there, we'll give it to everyone. All of the cities in what hat? So this this hat right here will have the cities of all of those all of those states. So like, let's say they pick California, Nevada, New York, Florida. Texas, all of the cities in all of those five states, maybe all the big cities, maybe all the major cities, maybe not all of the cities, like they probably wouldn't have Kerman in there, right? Because Kerman's a smaller, smaller, smaller city. They might have Fresno, they might have Bakersfield, LA, San Diego, um, state bigger cities, right? Put them in the hat. Pick out some. That's who gets our new item. If they like it, we'll give we'll give it to everyone because that's a sample. We'll see the we'll see if the sampling works for them. If they don't like it, we won't do it. Or maybe we'll do another sample, right? We'll do another sample to see if maybe that was just a bad sample. Okay, that's why that's called multi-stage. How is that different than cluster? Because cluster is the one that gets. How is that different than cluster? Hmm? It could be places. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, that's one of the differences. There's another difference. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's that. Yeah, because the word right there, it's bolded all. So if I was to do cluster, I do the same way, except I wouldn't have that. I would just say every city in California is going to get the new uh, the new item. Every city in Texas is going to get the new item. Every city in this, every city in this, every city in this, as opposed to this, the multi-stage, we keep taking samples until I'm done. We keep taking, um, we do sampling, okay? Okay, well, let's see, let's skip ahead. Let's skip, we'll do, we'll do bad, bad sampling later. Let's skip ahead to the examples. I think you guys are ready to do something. Besides, listen. Okay. Okay. So the premise says a farmer has a hundred plots of land on his property, on his or her property. Hundred plots of land. Okay. We're going to take sampling methods to choose which plot of land the way they want it to, by however they want it to be. Okay, so the farmer has said, uh, okay, so the farmer begins by choosing 10 of those that are most convenient for him to harvest without any other considerations. Mark with an X below the 10 they would choose. Okay, so if a farmer is doing a convenient sample of 10 out of the 100, which ones would they choose? No. That's the one, it's the most convenient, right? Convenient means the easiest for you to do, right? Anything that's convenient is extremely easy for you to do. So if if they live here, right, this is their house. That's where they live. The most convenient would be the 10 that are closest to their house. So these guys right here. It's not very convenient of me to go on the other side of the property. There was zero randomness involved. They actually chose because it's called a convenient sample. Convenient sample is not the way to do it. Okay. If you want to get a sample, if I want to get a sample of people in Fresno and I go to River Park at three o'clock or four o'clock, let's say right after this, I go, I go to River Park at four o'clock and I go ask people questions. That is 100% a convenient sample because it's easiest for me. I got off of school. I can go right there before I go home. I'll drive down there and get a sample. It's not a good sample because it was convenient to you. You're not going to get anyone who has a job that works after four or five o'clock, right? No one's down there at that time because they work or because they do other things, right? So if you want to get a convenient sample, you could go down to, if you want to get a good sample, you could go down to River Park, but I would not do it at three o'clock or four o'clock on a Monday, right? There's not many people down there compared to Friday night, right? Friday night, the place is people everywhere, right? That's a convenient sample. Okay, so the farmer has second thoughts about the selection and has decided to come to you as a statistics student to help them undermine or determine the approximate yield of the field. You are choosing 10 plots to harvest. Your job is to help one of the following, using one of the following methods. So method two is more of a scientific method, simple random sample, simple random sample using your calculator. Okay, so if you have a calculator, if you don't have one, grab one. This is the only thing we're gonna use for calculator this, this chapter. This is really it. And this doesn't even involve math or calculations. It's just, we use it as a, let's see, okay. Let me pull mine up. So those of you that have your own calculators, this is gonna be a lot easier than those of you that have some one of those calculators. Cause those calculators, there's a little glitch in them in this model that 
I don't know why it does it, but for some reason, watch, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so randomness. The only thing we're gonna use in this chapter is randomness. So to do randomness, you're gonna go to math, math. It's right underneath the green button, right underneath the green button. There's M-A-T-H. You're gonna hit that button right there, M-A-T-H, right under the green button. And then we're gonna go over to where it says prob, probability. There are five different things. There are five different things that say random. The first one says random. Uh, number five says random. Number six says random. Number seven says random. And number eight says random. You can use all of them, but the best ones to use are the, um, I would say, number one and number eight. So what's the difference between number one and number eight? Well, number one is just straight random. All right? Number eight is random, but it doesn't double up. So if I numbered you guys from one to 20, gave you a number, right? Your desk. And I said, I want to pick top five of you guys. So I pick one, two. What random will do is give you five numbers. I could pick 11 twice. I could pick 16 three times. That's possible, right? That's what one will do. But let's say I, I don't want to find anyone twice. I only find, want to find them once. Then I use eight. Eight only gives me one person each one time. So it won't double up. So if I was trying to find a sample of you guys and trying to find who I was going to ask, I would use eight. Here's the problem. Those calculators over there, watch, go to eight, and I'll, and I'll show you what the problem is. I don't know why this happens, but because technically this calculator is the same as those. It's the same calculator. But for some reason, it don't work. So it doesn't show this one other thing. That's the small issue, not even the big issue. So the lower. Well, if I want to find a random sampling of you guys, I would start with the lowest number, one. So I'd say one. Who's the highest number? 20. How many do you want to choose? Uh, five. This is what you're going to type in. That's what you're going to type in. One comma 20 comma five. So if you have those calculators over there, you got to put that in. Okay. One comma 20 comma five. That's what you got to put in. It's, it'll do the same thing, but mine cut and paste, whereas these calculators, you don't. Know. Okay. So that's saying, I want you to start with number one and go to number 20 and pick five in there. Okay. And then hit enter. What happens? Yep. Doesn't work. I don't know why, but those calculators don't work. Every other calculator does work. I picked five people randomly picked five people from one to 20. Okay. It works for some reason. I don't know why. So what do you do if you have one of those calculators? You got to use a workaround. You got to do a workaround. So your workaround involves going to the same thing, but instead of number eight, you're going to choose number one. Okay. And then you put, where do I start? One comma. Where do I finish? 20 comma. How many do you want to choose? Five. If you look, I'm sure you'll find it. It's right on, it's right on here too. Let's see. Let's see. What did I do? No. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go to number five. Sorry, random we don't use. Uh, go to number five. Five is the one. Five and eight. Five and eight. Five and eight. So again, where do I want to start? Where do I want to finish? How many do I want to choose? INT means interval. So from one to 20, I didn't want to go any more farther than 120. Okay. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. 
Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Thank you. Okay. If what if one person was chosen twice? What if there were two twenties? What would I do? I got to do it again. I got to keep doing it again until I don't. So you got to do it again, do it again, do it again, do it again. Sometimes that can be a pain in the butt. Okay. That's what you do. That's your workaround. If I only choose five, it's not that big of a deal. But there'll be some times when you choose from one to, you choose from one to 10 and you want five of them. You're guaranteed. You're almost, not almost guaranteed, but very good chance that you're going to pick doubles, right? We don't want doubles. Okay. Sometimes doubles are okay. But in this case, I don't have two 20s. I only have one person who sits at desk 20. Okay. So they can't. So that's the workaround. Okay. So five or eight. So one more time. One more time. Eyes up here. If you got it, great. If you don't have it, I'm going to show you one more time. So if you want to randomly choose, you go to prob you go to math probability, and then you either use five. If you got one of those calculators, definitely five. I prefer eight. So if you have your own calculator, eight should work perfect for you. Okay. Because it guarantees that nothing is chosen twice. Okay. And then let me go back to the notes. And then let me write this down. So you go from math to probability. And then, like I said, five or eight, option five or option eight. And then if it doesn't give you the option, if some of them give you the cut and paste option, if you give the cut and paste option, what do I mean by the cut and paste option? I mean, where they actually tell you what's the lower, what's the higher, what's the, what's the lower, what's the upper, and then this is what it's gonna be. It's gonna be um, start, finish, and then N. N is the number you want. How many numbers do I wanna be chosen? Start, finish, N. Where do you wanna start counting? Where do you wanna finish counting? And how many do you wanna count? Okay, how many do you wanna count? Okay. All right, so let's do let's we let's do ours. Okay. So go back to the method 2, method 2. What do we pick? What do we do? Okay, do it, see what you get. One comma, 100 comma, 10. You get a bunch of numbers, right? You get 10 numbers. You shouldn't get decimal numbers. Okay, so the first number, whatever your first number is. What do I do with that? Let's say my first number, it gave me a list. Uh, let's see, eight, one, comma, 100, comma, 10, and go watch, watch. Okay, so I got two. Okay, so I go here. Two. Uh, we'll make this two right here. What's wrong with that? Okay, how about this one? We'll make this two right here. 
What's wrong with that? Make this two then. What's that? Yeah, I chose it. I just chose it right now. That's two. Okay, why is it random? I did choose two. They chose two. What's that? Yeah, I chose the place on the graph. That's two because it's one, two. Yeah, why is it okay? Why is it either one? Either one. Why is it okay or why is it not okay? By me choosing that X right there, what which rule, which rule did I violate? Say it loud, I heard it. Human choice. Human choice. Human choice is okay, but it has to happen before you randomly choose. Before, right? I have to know which one is two, which one is three, which one is 50, which one is 100. I have to know that before. Because if I know that now, then I can fudge it. I can say, no, no, I really want you to pick this guy right here. I really want this guy to be chosen. So I'm going to say, since it's a two, that one's two. Right? That's being dishonest, right? Going back and saying that. Whereas if I said, no, that one's going to be whatever, I have to number all of them. I have to number them. That's my system. You have to have a system. So I have to number them before I go to my calculator. Okay? So it doesn't matter. You can number them any way you want. You can say, oh, yeah, yeah. This is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five, this is six. You can number them crazy like that, or you can have more of a system. How about this? Our, most of the time, students do this. They say, okay, we'll see the top row. One, two, three, four, five, oops, not ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the first 10, the first, so I'll go down this right here. And then the next one, I'll start with 11, right? So this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. This is 20. This is 21 to 30. So on and so forth, right? You don't have to keep numbering them. You just got the idea, right? That's how, that's how I'm going to number them. You got to do that before you go to the calculator. Otherwise, it's human choice, okay? Human choice is okay as long as it comes before the randomization, okay? It's okay as long as it comes after. So now that we know that, let's go back to our calculator. Yeah, absolutely. You can label it any way you want. As long as it comes before, as long as, here's the thing. As long as every number has a box, if, Two doesn't have a box and you did it wrong. If all of these numbers have boxes and you only did, you only have one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, one, seven, one, eight, and so on and so forth, that's okay. But you got to do that before you do randomization. Okay. So tomorrow when we come in, we're going to come in, make sure they're numbered. So make sure you're numbered. So when you go in your calculator tomorrow and hit enter, you know where that one is. We're not gonna use the numbers you used earlier, the ones you got, the 10 that you got, because we didn't know where number two was. We didn't know where number 10 was. We didn't know, now we do. So the last thing I want you to do is number them. Number them so that you know. So if I said, where's 65? You'd be like, oh, it's right there. Where's 12? Oh, it's right there. Right, so on and so forth, okay? So make sure you number them. Once you have them numbered, you're ready. We'll, tomorrow we'll jump right into it and we'll use the calculator. But you got to have the number beforehand. Okay, that's part of your system. All right. Okay, we'll pick up tomorrow right there and then we'll do the rest.